My name is Fazir Mohammed. I'm a journalist and broadcaster, but I'm also involved in a family a business. We sell electrical materials. We've been in business uh, for the last 41 years. But as far as the public profile is concerned, uh, I am uh, known primarily as uh, a cricket commentator as well and uh, a talk show host. I host uh, a morning program, and as you can hear, the phone ringing off uh, in uh, the background. Uh, it is uh, a business place that, that we have. Yes, our activity goes on uh, all the time. Uh, I am from the San Juan region of Trinidad and Tobago, or San Juan, as we say in our, in our part of the world. I've lived here all my life. Uh, I'm 46 years of age and uh, I have no intention of moving uh, from here because uh, for me this San Juan area on the East West Corridor it really typifies what Trinidad and Tobago is all about. It's a mixture of uh, the East Indian and uh, the African. It's a mixture of cultures, a mixture of societies. It's both urban and rural. Uh, so it is the sort of environment that I, I see to be almost reflective of the entire community that is Trinidad and, and Tobago. Essentially, I, I always had this, uh, this love of writing and, and describing things, whether it be sporting or otherwise. I actually had ambitions very early in my academic life as a, to be an accountant. But then I realized that it was too boring uh, for me in that sense. And also I failed all my A-levels, so that put an end uh, to all of that. Uh, and that should be a, a lesson to, to all of you out there, that academic success is what we should strive for, yes, but we shouldn't be downcast, you shouldn't be depressed if the results don't turn out the way that you would like it to turn out. It's not the end of the world by any means if you're prepared to put in hard work. And that certainly is my own experience, uh, because after failing my A-levels, uh, I got the opportunity uh, to, to do what we would call a grade 13 in Canada. Uh, I did extremely well there and qualified for university uh, in Ottawa in Canada. But I turned down the opportunity because I wanted to come back home to Trinidad to work uh, because I saw myself then uh, as someone who had the ability to express himself via writings and so on and I wanted to get a job as a journalist. Uh, I got a job in a local community newspaper known as the TNT Mirror which is uh, not far from where I live in San Juan. I worked there for, for a couple of weeks, that was in 1985 and then I was encouraged by the owner of the, of the newspaper at the time to move on to one of the more established national newspapers which was the Guardian uh, newspaper and from then on I move, moved on uh, taking advantage of the opportunities that came my way. I moved into radio in 1991, I got my first opportunities to do cricket commentary the year later and then I, I really took a, a huge leap forward uh, as far as my own career by investing in myself and going on a tour of Australia in 1996-97. I lost a tremendous amount of money. I took a loan from my parents uh, to, to help me along the way. But it was an investment in myself. And sometimes this is, again, uh, a message for the young people that you really need to persevere. You really need to, to make that effort, to make that sacrifice in yourself, even when no one else believes in you. Because that was my own experience. When I was working in the radio station and I, I spoke to my, my seniors about going on a tour of Australia, they said, why do you want to do that? You're going, it's going to be a waste of time, you're going to lose money, nobody's going to be interested. But if you back yourself, if you believe in yourself, if you can get someone to support you along the way, give it your best shot and do the very best that you can because it's your own future that is at stake. From that opportunity, that, that's when the exposure came in because not too many people would have gone to Australia from our part of the world to cover a, a, a West Indies cricket tour. And because of that additional exposure, I've been able to get additional opportunities in radio broadcasting. And, and that certainly has given me the, the, the platform to develop my career, where now I've been able to cover cricket all over the world, uh, I've been able to cover cricket throughout the Caribbean, and now, over the last four years, I've developed a bit of a career as a morning talk show host. And yes, there, there would have been some challenges along the way. Some of you might be aware that I was removed from my position as the talk show host at uh, CNMG, uh, the first up program in November of uh, 2010. And as one door closes, another one opens. It uh, might have uh, created a lot of consternation in the public as to what happened, but I've since moved on. I'm now hosting the morning edition program on TV6. I'm enjoying myself. It's very challenging because you've got to be on top of your game uh, all the time. Uh, but it certainly has proven to be very rewarding, not just financially, because it isn't just about money. It's also about job satisfaction. And, and again, this is another uh, message that I would like to leave with, with our, our young viewers. That yes, you might make a tremendous amount of money in something that you don't like at all, but you have the chance also to do something 
that may not make a tremendous amount of money, but you can really enjoy what you're doing. You can put your heart and soul into it. And that is something that I aspire to achieve. And that is something I hope for you all as well, that you're able to achieve in, in looking towards something that can make a contribution towards your own society. And that obviously you can make a decent living as well. So yes, there have been challenges like getting fired. I've been fired twice from jobs in the media. But if you hold on to your integrity, that is the most important thing. And if it's something that I would like to tell you, especially in these times, in difficult economic times, in times when you might be urged to cut corners, uh, to, to, to do a favor, to get, get things done for you or on behalf of someone else, which might not be entirely legal, uh, I will urge you, maintain your integrity. Because certainly in any profession, if you are ultimately identified as a person of integrity, as a person who will not sacrifice his values and his principles, his or her values and principles uh, for the sake of favoring someone, then you will be seen ultimately as someone who they can trust, who any business person can trust in achieving a particular goal that they would like to achieve. So I will ask you and I will urge you, do not discount your integrity. Do not is discount uh, your, your ability to work hard, to do what is required of you for your own sake and for those, in your, those who are employing you as well. I grew up not, not desperately poor, but we didn't have everything. But one thing we did have was that family togetherness. One thing we did have was that sense of values that do not be tempted by what your neighbor has. Do not be tempted by what someone else might have because we automatically assume they might have done it illegally, but they might have just worked very hard to get it. And that's something I learned very early on in, in my life developing, that do not be jealous of what other people have. You just make up your mind to work very hard. And this is something that our young people these days because life is so fast paced and we all see the bling bling and we all see everyone driving expensive cars and expensive cell phones and expensive jewelry and think it can happen overnight. No, it might require a tremendous amount of work. And I say again to you, just as we look around and see people enjoying the good life financially, don't take it for granted that they have done so via illegal means. They might have done so simply because of the sheer dint of very hard work. And for you young people out there, However disadvantaged your community, think about it as this is the chance for you to lift yourself above your circumstances and to also be an inspiration to others because you have the chance, if you come from a disadvantaged community, to be an inspiration to others around you, to show them that it is quite possible to be number one in your chosen profession, to be an example for others, to make a good living, to lead by example and therefore be an example to others. So often we find ourselves in situations where uh, people who make a, a tremendous amount of money are not exemplars, they do the wrong things and we see our young people moving towards that. But at the end of the day, when you put your, yourself at night lying down with your head on the pillow, can you say comfortably that I am doing the best that I can do for myself, for my family and my community? And I think that is the message I would like to leave with you young people, that life is not just about enjoying the material things but it's at the end of the day knowing that you have made a contribution for yourself for your family for your society and when it's your time to leave this earth whenever the good lord determines that it's our time to go that you could probably tell yourself before that time arrives that you have made a worthwhile contribution to your own society be it be a fishing village fishing village in matlot or an urban area in Laventil, if you can say to yourself honestly that I have made a useful contribution, whatever my circumstances, then you have led a very useful life.